Hello and welcome to a POV cast. I'm playing against Blood Ear here on Tide Crafty's Maximus. So, I actually got a dislike on my POV video, probably because I didn't do commentary on it. I mean, I'm not too bothered. I think I do enough videos that you can skip the ones you don't like, but uh, people do prefer when I commentate on them. So let's do some commentary on this one. So we're not going to build any P-Gens, just going to make the form X's, make the hydrocarbon then. Because Hydro is so close. Can build all the mexes with the ACU. And then we go second air. So make second air in this map because everyone makes second air. To be honest, I sh could probably make second land versus Blood Ear because Blood Ear does not go for bombers. This is one of the maps where second air, first bomber is actually still used quite frequently as it allows you to do uh, damage to the expanding engineers in the water which you can't raid otherwise barring some two on hover. My tank is very early here, probably I don't really need to make fourth tank. Kinda Worried about a lab, but Blood here doesn't really make labs, so a bit of a waste, I think. A bit sloppy of the build order, some idle time and stuff, which is not good. Again, another tank. Could go greedier. Certainly, versus Blooder, you can be a bit, be a bit greedier. see what we can do generally walk after the first after the second factory with the ACU to the towards the expansion because you can see the mass bar I have about half the mass for factory I haven't got my closest mexes yet really still grabbing them and I need the power to make those mixes and also to support the air factory and to support more power production. So I see his ACU there and it kind of makes me think that he might go to the left side with his ACU. That kind of throws me off slightly. don't know what's going on with the replay there. The video kind of screwing up. Sorry for that. Factory might have been a mistake with those engineers. Probably should just keep building power because I think in the future now, a few minutes, I'm gonna seconds, I'm gonna run out of power. Have our naval factory up and. How fast the naval factory goes up is kind of important. Mine is sort of not too fast, not too slow. Maybe it is too slow in this scenario, so we shall see. Managed to save my air scout, which is nice. Very little helps. Also, if you run out of power in the early game and you can't support your air factory, which happens very often on this map, just make engineers out of it, switch your land factory to tanks, so that you actually have uh, build power and more tanks, and I guess you will have less air, but a lot of opponents will not even take advantage of that in any way, so... One of the big differences at of in raiding is how people will actually abuse advantages like that where players have air or don't have air a lot of time it doesn't even matter 
You can do, you can, if you're better than your opponent or, well, it's kind of irrelevant if you're better or not, but you can do damage without air control. And you can also do zero damage with air control and suffer damage with air control, so. Not always a given that you just don't make aggressive units or don't have enough inties or something. If people are playing correctly then this applies but a lot of people will not take advantage of these things so now I'm kind of running out of power. I have to probably pause our air factory here. Trying to save that engineer that's expanding to the three mexes. Trying to get some scouting. I think he's going to stop me from running up the the little peninsula. And now I see his ACU is on the the top again. So I was kind of just I was just wrong for a while there. I was thinking that he was going to go to the left with his ACU, but he didn't. That's why I probably wouldn't even send so many tanks to the bottom, or I would or I would send. Probably more tanks to the bottom and the mid instead of the top side. Otherwise, we have yeah frigate coming to my base. I should probably build a torp launcher there instead of uh, another factory first. And I feel like the game is going okay for me now. It's basically even. Try as much as possible to avoid giving the ACU kills. Have a PD in mid. Force him to deal with that. Because that's two extra mechs. It's kind of important. But I don't have my, my little uh, plateau thing. The three mechs. I haven't sent an engineer there. Or he died, I'm not sure which. Which is kind of bad. It's also time to start thinking about making a transport. And I think actually my air factory has been idle for a very long time. Oh no, it's not actually idle. But I don't have much air. Moving to T2 land because... Uh, well, Seraphim, I really want the bots. I think T2 land can be very good here. And I'm in a safe enough position. I don't think I'm going to lose serious map control while making T2 land. This frigate done way too much damage. It's about to kill the hydrocarbon. That's just sort of just needless damage. I could send some arties to force it to micro and stuff. Things like that. Kind of see, I I see him sending these tanks through through past those three maxes. Send quite a few uh, tanks there. So then I decide, well, let's see what if I can put any pressure with my tanks that are close to mid. So I push forward. He has enough tanks. So then I retreat and also try and run up the the little plateau to kill those maxes. So. I always try and react to how your opponent is using their units. Not just directly like I need to defend versus this attack, but also where can I use my units now that he's using his units here. Again, a lot of damage from the frigates, and I think that's actually the main difference now between us. And I misclicked my, my units there. I could have gotten the whole way up the peninsula and killed those maxes, but I misclicked and so they're gonna die to mantis so make some arties because arties can kill those mexes on the peninsula or not it's not a peninsula on the plateau <laughs> but yeah i got some raiding done but he his raiding is certainly better and now i see a million inties and he's looking for my air. He could have killed my air a long time ago. So I'm going to build some anti-air. 
get some flak out, and I should be running away with my interceptors, but I'm not. Should run to the corners of the map where he doesn't have radar and stuff. Also, I should be using uh, the floating arities to actually do some really nice raiding. Just a, a great tool, and I'm just ignoring it, basically. Now we're getting the islands. Just quite... Quite late, I think. Quite late. My T2 land actually took quite a long time to build as well. If it is even done. Not sure, it's almost done. There it is now. Just gonna add more air build power in the futile attempt to regain air control. Also gonna make flak. Flak is the best thing to do versus Inti's. Just wipe out entire interceptor forces in seconds. It gives you a very safe place to put your interceptors right over the right over your flak. And now we have Jester's coming in to kill Maxes. That's gonna be quite annoying to deal with. Blood deer with a nice fight there. You got a nice fight because I my army was positioning correctly in mid there. I was um, sort of horizontal and he hit me perpendicular angle. And these gestures have now killed three mexes. I'm building anti-air in many locations. I'm also building flak. Gestures are not very good. I wouldn't recommend... Well, not very good at killing anti-air. I wouldn't recommend using them versus... T1A turrets, better to just run away because they cost almost as much as a T2 gunship to get a lot less HP. HP. And so they're yeah, they will die to those turrets faster than faster than say T2 gunships would. Or Mex is going down, got some idols. And I really need my Ilshis to do some work pretty soon. I got my islands, but I'm not building anti-air. I should be building anti-air on them because obviously he has gestures. And scouting is also quite poor. Getting some damage done. See some raiding with the subs and the, the frigates. It's quite good. And sort of it makes the gesture harassment bit less painful. And the gestures are expensive. They're, you know, it's similar cost to, a, say, a frigate. A bit, a bit cheaper. Well, a bit cheaper in mass, a lot, a lot more expensive in power. What do we do now? We need to increase our teacher land production. We need to keep eat going. And I need to focus on well, I probably, I would actually, should probably just go like full subs or something. I think frigates, just a lot more subs would be good instead of frigates. Because there are so many underwater mexes to kill. And now I have some, some reclaim on my side that I need to focus on grabbing. I still need to build more air. Get my T2P gen up, all the normal stuff. And try and re-expand every time as fast as possible after he after he raids me. I'm now suicided a lot of T1 Navy on his side, and I'm losing my islands to gestures without much reaction. So at this point, it starts to feel a lot less um, a lot less good for me. gonna try and just let him feed mass. See he's being quite aggressive. Now I have flak to defend myself. This T2 on the commander is probably not so good and my economy management looks very bad now and that's because I've lost so many mexes. I would be it would look a lot better if I actually had 
had the mass income that I should have. Even then, I probably have too much power. Also, on this map, you should try and build your T1 power away from away from the shore, so that it cannot be killed by frigates. A lot of people tend to build their build their uh, build their power in range of frigates next to the shore, which is quite bad. So we're still holding on, holding on to the majority. Well, main our main map control. In terms of navy, I think I should. Well, we have tor bombers out for blood here now, which one shot, uh, one shot T1 subs, and that is what he's aiming for. The subs, of course. So, the subs are not going to do very well. And I also need to keep E going. I haven't really scouted him very much. But I'm, I can be pretty confident he's not E going in the water because he lost so many mexes to, um, to those subs not that long ago. And I still don't have T2P gen, but I have plenty of power, so it's not really... don't really need, need it too badly. My ACU, making a T2 in the ACU is mostly just for safety because I was afraid of air. But I could, uh... yeah, I'm not sure how to use this ACU. I could go into the water here and just m control. That would actually be a good idea to go to the water, make torp, torp defense there. Just control that completely. And then I could come back out of the water and use my ACU with maybe a gun upgrade or something. But yeah, I could I could definitely just control that area of the water with the, an ACU there. It's very annoying to take so much damage. You can see the subs now in the water attacking my attacking my mexes and still frigates raiding this this location in the bottom left. Having to micro quite a lot with the Ilchevo because they're so expensive, and I'm against a mix of Medusa and Rhino and Mantis. Medusa will absolutely destroy because of that stun and obviously pretty significant damage. I have a nice amount of, of Ilshis now. And I'm trying to use bombers to deny his control of those islands. I'm playing this quite blind. I just don't... I haven't really scouted. I just know that it's probably more or less even. But is not the kind of guy to cheese anyway, so... You don't have to be too scared, but I do expect fast T3 land from him. Well, relatively fast, not slow anyway. So I'm going T3 land very shortly. Because he is going to want to make lawyers. He likes that unit a lot. Rightly so. I think this repeated raiding in the bottom left with the frigates has hurt me hugely in this game. And also, obviously, these extra mexes he's got are very, very beneficial to him. Now I see the T2 air. I'm not super scared of that. I have a decent number of flax. He's doing nice damage to that army. I actually suicide my air there, which is quite bad. And I shouldn't really build so much anti-air next to my ACU. Eco balance looking quite poor right now. The naval battles are actually so important and it's very difficult to micro the naval while also fighting all this all these land battles in the air. 
because there's just again so many water maxes that the land battle matters or the water battle matters hugely if you can micro the subs attack the subs before the frigates and then win the sub battle like that then actually gain a big advantage it allows you to do a lot of damage see there I lost both subs there I had two subs he had two subs I lost both of mine he didn't lose his he also still has those torp bombers out this right here I'm annoyed because I I think I attack moved with quite a few you can see he has a lot of uh, it's a lot of rhinos and Medusa there and he just absolutely destroyed me with that army because I wasn't micring for those however many seconds I think I attack moved or either way the the issues were stationary and they got absolutely destroyed and that was really a huge portion of my army that just got killed there in a very poor trade so this at this point now I'm feeling under a huge amount of pressure it's a lot of rhinos so I have T2PD in my base I'm trying to kill the air as best as I can. It's still doing damage. I think really I need to make more make more T1 Torp defense. That would be a great help. Stop people from using so many subs so effectively. This is pretty good for me. I'm gonna clean up this army, leave some reclaim. ACU did a good job, and my Yoshis also did a good job. The game is slipping away, and I also have a full mass bar. I don't have enough uh, build power in my base. I should have a lot more engineers, which is obviously a pretty newbie mistake to make to not have enough build power in your base, but. It happens. I have a nice reclaim field here if I can actually grab it. A T2 factory in the expansion would also be nice. And maybe T2 air just even to s just suicide some torp, torp bombers into those uh, <laughs> into those subs. Like Blood Air is doing, he's basically suiciding his torp bombers. Still, a lot of mass, a lot of mass, and I don't feel comfortable upgrading mexes in the water at all. And I can kind of see he has maybe six T2 mexes at least. And I think this is really where I'm, I lost the game here in these last couple of minutes. If I was more efficient, if I actually spent this mass, if I had more build power in the base. I'd be in a solid position, I could have used all of this reclaim in mid. And around my ACU you can see there's some juicy wrecks as well. If I had done that then I think I would be in a solid so solid spot, not so far behind. But as it is now, he's got a big eco lead. Also my, my uh, naval micro is basically not, almost non-existent, unfortunately. Now we see the lawyers. I'm not surprised at all by that, of course. <laughs> He's cybern. Oh, we mopped them up. Of the one that was there. But now the south expansion is very vulnerable. There's no T2 PD there, there's no commander, no T2 land or T3 land. Not so good, and I've still. I also never regained my. Um, My islands, island expansions, and that's quite painful. I damaged some of his and damaged what he took from me, but uh, still not good. And I still have 2,000 mass, I actually more mass and storage than I had a moment ago. So all this reclaim field is actually not super useful because I'm not using it efficiently.
powerful Othams gonna wreck all these rhinos and stuff. And now my second TTP gen also very very much too late. So again, inefficiencies in economy costing me the game. And really, that's what costs mo most people games, <laughs> is inefficiencies in economy. And also, well, of course, using units incorrectly, wasting units, suiciding your commander, obviously a popular one. But uh, inefficiency in economy is, I think, the leading cause of losses in Supreme Commander. That's just how RTS works. Very economy driven. Well, most most RTS, I would say. Not something like uh, Company of Heroes or something. Obviously, that's the economy is so basic in that game that you don't really have to manage it. <laughs> but uh, you know, most RTS, I would say. And now the game is really lost, so I'm now suiciding my navy. He has a lot more T1 navy, took better fights, and now my mass is fast disappearing. I made a P gen that I didn't need as well. That's 1000 mass just being wasted. And he's going to have a lot of lawyers now as well. And I'm still missing map control. I'm now missing far more map control because I've lost the south expansion. So really, when I had that 2,000 mass in storage for a few minutes and then mismanaged my economy, that is something you can't afford. It's just uh, how to lose a game. Just going to try add more T3 build power, get more tanks out. Once you move to T3 land, you really have to put like 90% of your mass into that T3 land. Because it is so strong. And then the rest just for ecoing and a bit of air, you know. But almost all your mass really has to go into T3 land. Well, Autumns do pretty well versus, versus Loyalists. And he's not making bricks, he's only making lawyers, and I think that's a pretty good decision. Bricks are obviously a very strong unit, but not as strong as lawyers, basically. Not as good, and I have a powerful ACU, and lawyers are better versus ACUs because uh, you know each overcharge is going to kill a lot less, and also then if that stun ability, which is so powerful. Another thing, I think people. People often try and defend things with t spamming T2PDs, but you really kind of want to mix your T2PD and T1PD. Because the T1PD just does more damage and stops the units from getting in close and actually killing your T2PD. If you just have T2PD, something like a lawyer can easily, like say, just run into range of the T2PD and kill it because, well, it just has superior stats it does more damage has more health has the speed to just run into range so kind of need the t1 pd to stop them but here he just has too big an army gonna run in and i can't defend the t2p gen goes down i didn't reclaim it so the explosion went off and killed all the build power around it and I lost all of my P gens. Thankfully, I built a ton of T1 P gens. So I was so late to my T2 P gen, my first one. I still have power. But I'm going to need a T2 P gen if I'm actually going to use the reclaim and get back into the game. There is quite a lot of reclaim for me. He did suicide basically all of his army, but I have very little army left over. If I had some army left over, 
it would be better, but I only have, you know, a few Othams, and he's going to have more production, more mass income, so... At this point, the game is for sure over, and I, I don't even think it was actually a very good move to go in and kill that power there. Didn't really help that much. I think it maybe prolonged the game, actually, rather than shortening it. He could have just, instead, just gone after the ACU. That would be better. Because the stuns would just completely destroy me. So we'll just watch it until it, till the end. See what happens. Kind of obvious what's going to happen. Get some radar. Finally see... Uh, Pretty big army moving very quickly, so I know what that means. Got a horde of lawyers outside my base. So we'll try to survive as long as we can in the vain hope of winning. There's the stun. <laughs> yeah, I think he could just straight away probably just focus the ACU down. That's generally what you do with the lawyers, you don't want to just wait around killing units, you can just instantly surround the ACU, focus them down very, very fast. And that's what he does there. So, GG. Then I take a look finally and see all of the economy he has. Quite a lot. And that is it from me. So, thanks for watching you enjoyed you maybe learned something and i'll see you in the next one